In this video, we're going to use the law of cosines to solve an oblique triangle where we weren't given an angle side pair. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up this chart every time. Can't stress how useful this is. Can't stress enough how useful this is. So it we'll, doesn't really matter what order we write them in, but side C is 24, side A is 18, and angle B is 57 degrees. Notice how there's no angle side pair. I'm going to look for the pairs first, but there isn't one. That's how I know the law of sines won't help. So then we need to think about the law of cosines. Which version of the law of cosines uses the cosine of angle B? Uses angle B. Well, it's the one that has B squared by itself, which means we're going to use that version, and we're going to solve for B first. And then we're going to need to find angle A angle C, and truth is it won't matter which one we do first, I'm going to use the law of sines uh, to find it. So let's go through the process here. Uh, step one, we're going to find that third side, the law of cosines. So I'll start by setting up my law of cosines with the side we're looking for and the angle that we have in the problem. Basically what it means is we need to make sure we use the version that has the cosine of b in it. So that would be a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. And we can fill in what we need to know. We don't know b yet, so that's going to stay b squared. But we know a is 18 and c is 24. And we're going to use the same 18 and 24 in the next term, times the cosine of 57 degrees. Now, there's a lot of math in there, and I'm really not expecting you to do 24 squared in your head, or even on paper. Um, if you need to, you can. You know, multiplying 24 by 24, it's really not that hard. Um, that being said, it's not exactly worth our time right now. So what I'll do is I'll go to Desmos. I will say that b is going to be equal to, and it's always good to you know, remember to use that letter, call it b so that Desmos can use b in the future if we need it. b is going to be equal to a square root of, because what we found with that expression is what b squared is equal to. So we know if we want to find b, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 18 squared. 24 squared minus 2 times 18 times 24 times the cosine of 57 degrees. Um, and I, well, let's just take a look at the um, result here. It's telling me that B is 11. But just a second here. If this angle is 57 degrees, And the side across from it is 11. Notice how the side across from that is way, 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 way smaller than that. Can that be? Like, can, does that make sense that the angle, that the side across from 57 degrees is that much smaller than any of the other sides? Remember, the triangle inequality theorem tells us that the biggest side is across from the biggest angle, and the law of sines tells us there's like some comparison to be made there. Meaning that if one angle is only a little bit bigger than another angle, its side should only be a little bit bigger than the other side. Which just tells me something was wrong here. What did I do? Well, remember, we moved to Desmos, I opened up a new window, I entered the cosine of 57 degrees, I need to tell Desmos that I'm talking about degrees. It is worth looking at your numbers when you get your answers to see if you missed something. That makes much more sense. B is 20.7. That is a lot closer to 24. It just it makes sense that the 57 degree angle shouldn't be that much bigger or that much smaller than um, one of the other angles. So we said that B is equal to 20.7, which is fine to write as my answer. Just remember that I'm going to be using the letter B in Desmos when I do my work in the future. Okay. 
I can write that down if I want. Here's my diagram, 20.7. And now, why can I use the law of sines? Well, now I've got an angle side pair. So now we can use the law of sines to say that uh, we're going to be looking for angle A or angle B right now. Um, and I will tell you that we always use the law of sines to find acute angles if we have the choice. And so I'm going to use the law of sines to find the eight, angle A, which is across from the 18, and not the C, which is across from the 24. So I'm going to find angle A first. We'll talk more about why you use the law of sines to find the smaller angle in just a minute. But we're going to do that. We're going to set up the law of sines. We're looking for angle A. So it's going to be the sine of angle A divided by the measure of side A is equal to the sine of angle B which I know is 57 degrees, divided by the measure of side B. I'm going to write down the 20.7, but remember, in Desmos, I'm going to use the letter B here. And so the sine of A would be equal to 18 times the sine of 57 degrees over 20.7. And notice how it's 18 over 20.7. It's definitely a number less than 1, which means that I'm not going to get that undefined issue we saw in our last class. A definitely exists, is the arc sine, the angle whose sine is, whatever this crazy annoying fraction turns out to be. Now that I've got it all written out, I'm just going to go to Desmos and type that all in at once. Again, resist the temptation to sort of enter in things like sine of 57 into Desmos and turn it into a decimal and use that decimal in your problem. Just keep calling it the sine of 57 until you're ready to finally type it in. So this is going to be my angle A. It's the arc sine of, we said it was 18 times the sine of 57 over our side B, right, so 20.7. And that angle A is 46.75 degrees, which in your final answer, you are totally welcome to round that to 47 degrees. And then finding the third angle is the easy part. Remember, this is the like number one thing to remember because it's the easiest thing in the, in the whole world of triangles. Is if you know two angles, you know the third. So angle C would have to equal 180 minus angle B that they gave us minus angle A that we found. And when I do that on Desmos, and I mean, I, I don't really need to do it this way because I can subtract pretty easily with that rounded number. But I might as well just call it A, because I can. So angle C is 76 degrees. And that is the last piece of it. So just go over these steps. Make sure you kind of can follow this logic of what we did. We used the law of cosines first, because we didn't have an angle side pair. So we needed to use the law of cosines to find the missing side. Once we found that missing side, now we had the angle side pair. So now we're able to use the law of sines.